What's up guys, welcome back to another wee tutorial here. Um, following on from making a metal barrier last time, I am for some reason going to make another metal barrier today because apparently I'm obsessed with metal barriers. So let's get a little look at what we're going to make. Just going to Google Images here. Um, just another one of these metal crowd barriers. Uh, go for a design kind of like this. Uh, there's a couple of different designs here. But the techniques I show you can be adapted into other shapes quite easily. Um, I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy VII Remake and it's got a lot of industrial stuff and I'm just liking the props and I'm thinking to myself while I play it, how do I remake these? So that's why I'm making these tutorials because they're allowing me to show you a couple of different techniques. So this one, um, we're going to actually go uh, a new project in 3D Studio Max. Um, when you've opened that up, go to your create panel here and go to the second little panel uh, called shapes. Now we've used a lot of the, the box and sphere and cylinder and stuff before. I want you to go over here to shapes uh, and you'll see we've got a drop down box here and it'll default to splines. I want you to leave it on splines. Um, splines are kind of like vector paths and we can do a lot of stuff with them. Uh, they're useful for animation, for doing different things and moving cameras along lines but they're also useful for modeling as well. I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to show you how to make this shape using a spline. So I'm just going to grab the rectangle and if I drag the rectangle out, you'll see what it's creating. It's literally just a like a, a line shape. And now this actually has no, uh, it's got no form. It's got no uh, 3D physicality to it. It's got no actual size. It's literally just lines in space. Um, so if we want to render this, nothing would actually appear. But if I go over to my modifier panel here, first of all, what I'm going to do is set it to a rough size that I want. And I'm going to go uh, looking at this one, uh, two by three meters is the width of this. So the width and the height should be about a meter off the ground, plus a little bit. Um, so that gives me a rough size. My width is going to be, I'll just go 200 centimeters. And I'll zoom out to see that. And I'll do my length to say 80. And what I'm going to do is just this little option called corner radius. I can increase this and what that'll do is as I lift that up you'll see that softens off those edges. Now that is the simplest way of doing this but I'm going to show you another way um, just so that you have another little tool in your uh, your toolkit. So I'm going to leave that at zero for now and I'm also going to rotate this round by 90 degrees. So I'm going to just activate my angle snaps to make sure my angles go at a multiple of five. We we'll try and collect the right axis. Here we go. 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my position. My little options here. I'm going to just right click the little up down arrows. Click. Click and make sure that's zeroed. Now I want this to be about a meter off the ground. I know this is 80 centimeters tall. So this midpoint is going to be 40. Which means that top point there is 40 centimeters off the ground. So I'm just going to add... I think in here a four zero and that will move that up and that should be just sitting above no sorry a 60 I need a 60 not a 40 so the 40 puts it actually level on the ground but I want those little uh, feet on the bottom here to actually raise it up so I'm going to raise this whoops come on select that again raise this the height needs to be 60 actually sorry there we go perfect now uh, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to convert to, no I'm not, I'm not going to do that just yet, am I? Yes I am. We right click, convert to editable spline. So same as we would do with our primitives, we change an editable poly, we're going to change this one to an editable spline. Here we go. And what I want to do now is just select, we have vertex, we have uh, segment and we have spline. Same way in our objects, we have vertex, edge, poly, etc. If I click on the vertex, you'll see here this rectangle has four corners. And the little tool I'm going to show you, what we can do is we can select these individually. And if we scroll down, we have a little option called fillet. Now if I activate fillet mode, and I click this up, it's doing the exact same thing as the corner radius. But I like this option because it gives us more control over them individually. And if you're doing a complex shape, this is what you would do to uh, um, get a bit of control on individual vertices. 
So I'm just going to undo that. What I'll do is I'll select all four vertices and I will fill them up to what looks about right. I think that'll do grand. Uh, round one, there we go. Yeah. So it's not too big a radius on those there. Um, yeah, that'll do. Probably not 100% accurate, but good enough. So that's that. The next thing I want to do, as I said, this will not actually render out in game or in an animation or because there's actually nothing there. It's just lines. So what we want to do is click on this little button that says rendering. And we'll come up to the top of that. There's these two buttons here called enable and renderer and enable in viewport. So renderer is mainly for if we're doing um, uh, the, the built-in rendering for animation and stuff. But if we click on this enable in viewport as well, uh, you can see what's happening here. If I zoom in, what this is doing is actually giving it a thickness, turning it into actual 3D shape. And you can see here just in uh, render, uh, radial render, thickness of one centimeter. And we can adjust this up or down. So we adjust that up to about a uh, radius of about two centimeters, uh, maybe just a tiny bit less. Two and a half. That gives about five centimeters altogether thickness. And that would seem about right for one of these barriers, doesn't it? Yeah. So five centimeters. I'll maybe just bump it up just the slightest wee bit. I think it's it's technically accurate, but in terms of looks wise, a wee bit thin. Uh, so, sides, if I press F4 now, you can see what's actually happening here. Uh, we've basically, it's kind of like a long tube, it's like a long cylinder with all these bends in it. Uh, we've got the number of sides here, we can bring this way down or way up uh, to get a smoother cylinder. I think for a low poly game asset, 12 is, 12 is definitely enough. Could we get away with 8? If you're being really, really careful with your polygons, you could probably get away with eight. Uh, angle, we don't need to touch that. A lot of these we don't need to touch, not for this little model, but there is one more. Uh, interpolation. Interpolation steps six is the default. And what this is, is how many polygons we get on these corners. So again, we can pull it up higher to get a far smoother corner. But I think 6 actually isn't too bad. We'll leave it at 6. So, at this point, what do I want to do? I could maybe leave it as a spline for a while. But I think I'm happy enough with that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and convert to edible poly. So now it's no longer a spline. It's actually a complete... Uh, it's a complete... 3D object is as if we start it with just our regular primitives instead of this spline. So, okay, next thing we need to do is put these spokes in the middle of it. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Look, we've got about 15, 16 of these here, okay. Uh, and they are a good bit thinner than the outer ones. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to go just to a plain cylinder this time. I'm going to create a little cylinder out here. And I know I want this to be a height of 80 centimeters because this whole thing is 80 centimeters. So I'll set that to 80. Uh, my radius, I'm going to set my radius to about um, 0.7 centimeters. So it's nice and thin. Uh, I'm also going to select this and go to zero it. So just right click here, right click here, and that will zero it. And you can see that then puts it right in the path of this which is perfect. And now I'm just going to eyeball it. And the thickness of that will... Yep, that's about the right size. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move over to the side again, up so slightly. Uh, come back to my modify. This cylinder is starting with uh, 18 sides and 5 height segments. I do not need nearly that amount of detail. So height segments down to 1. Sides I could go as low as 6, I think, and that gives a kind of a, a hexagonal cross section on here. If I zoom in, that is, I can't much closer than that. That is, that's perfect for what we need. Now, what I will do before I go any further, just looking at my shape here. Now, you can't see this uh, with F4 activated, you can't really see. Um, 
that we've got no smoothing groups here. So that's another wee thing we need to look at in a second. Um, but let's fix this first. Uh, we've got a little cylinder. I'm going to right click, convert to edible poly. Uh, just to save myself uh, some headaches later on. I'm just going to delete this little top piece here when my laptop catches up. There we go. Delete you at the top. And uh, can I get you to the bottom? There we go. Delete you. Perfect. So I'm just doing that because a smaller poly count. Not that it'll make much difference, but um, every little helps, I suppose. But also, when I go to unwrap, I'll have less wee fiddly bits that I need to sort out. So I've selected that now, and I will just zero you out. Now I will move you over here to about the edge. And I'm just going to eyeball this, and hopefully I can do this uh, in one or two goes. I'm going to hold the shift key, and then I'm going to move this little object. And when you hold the shift key, you see you create a duplicate of it. And I'm just going to move it, say, about that much proportionally. That looks okay. And I'm going to, this will bring up a clone option dialog. When we hold shift, it clones it. Just going to leave it as a copy. But I'm going to put the number of copies up to about 16. I think there should be about 16 there, but I'll go a wee bit higher. Just to make sure that we go beyond. Yep, there we go. And all of these extras, I'm just going to select these. Delete. I'll delete this little one in here. And what I'll do is I will just move this over ever so slightly. Just to balance it out. I think that looks good. Uh, okay. So I mentioned the smoothing groups there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to select everything here. Select all of these polys. And if you're wondering what I mean by smoothing groups, if you look here, you can see we've got these kind of like very distinct kind of flat edges. We don't want that. This is meant to be a smooth cylinder. So I'll just select every poly there, make sure the back sides are selected. Yes, they are. Scroll down all the way down here in my modifier panel to my smoothing groups. So we've, we've got a couple that are working in here somewhere. But I'm just going to clear all and then just set them all to smoothing group one. So now if I deactivate that, that you can see we've got a much smoother result now. Okay, uh, let's go top level. I'm going to select you. I'm going to name this object because we haven't done that. We call it barrier. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to attach all of these little guys to it. So just select attach. Just click. Uh, I can't click drag, but I can just click and attach. Click and attach. Click and attach. Perfect. 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 Do, do, do. There we go. So I'll deactivate attach mode. Last thing I need to put on is my little feet on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is cylinder. I'm not going to overthink this too much. Just make a little cylinder. Uh, I will rotate it by about, well, I'll rotate whatever it needs, I suppose. There we are, about 53, we will say. We'll call it an even 55. And now I will just adjust my radius and my height until it's just connecting there. How does that look? That's not too bad. Radius is still a bit big. And I will just move it in to make sure that all those points are connecting. And it hides inside. Uh, maybe just a little bit. And a little bit longer. I'm literally just eyeballing this here. There's no, no exact signs to it. Just enough to make sure it's in completely. I think we can just come back just the tiniest wee amount. Maybe 35.2. Or just 35. Oops. There we go. Uh, yeah, that'll do lovely. That's grand. 
I can maybe just uh, fix some of these edges here. So that's okay. I'm going to convert to edible poly. That was a six sided shape. I just left it on six sides because that's the same as the last one that we've done there. And what I'm going to do is uh, not polygon load. I'm going to select my edge. Press F4 so I can see my edges. I'm going to select this top edge and maybe I'm going to come into my left viewport here. And all I'm going to do is just extend that down. Yeah, I won't let me select. Come on. There we go. I'm just going to move that down, keeping the line as straight as it is. There we go. And do the same for this bottom one. Try to keep it in line. Perfect. There we are. Uh, that's not looking too bad. I think that looks pretty good. That will do my job nicely. Uh, so we'll go to top level. And what I want to do now is hold shift. Duplicate this once. Uh, leave it as a copy. That's okay. And I'm going to rotate this by nine, sorry, 180 degrees. Make sure we get the right axis. And I will just activate my angle snaps as well. Make sure that is uh, going perfectly 180. And that messes up my axes. God, I hate when it does that. Come on, select axes, select axes. Come on. Come on. There we go. So, oh yeah, yellow text on top of a yellow thing. But there we go, that's perfect. I uh, just move you down now. That should be as close as makes no difference. I just pull your tennis a bit more. And it really is just being fiddly here at this point. Let me make sure it's nice and perfect. Yeah, that'll do. That is lovely. Uh, and I will take, so I'll take you, and I will take you, and I'll just hold shift, and I will move you down and try and match you up. So you're just about the inside of that second one there. Yeah, cool. And again, just eyeball on it, but try to be as correct as you can. There we go. So. Once again, I will just attach these guys. The reason I'm attaching them is um, if they're left as separate objects, because I did that rotation, um, that rotation can sometimes glitch out a wee bit in Max. Um, oh, and do you know what else I'll do as well? I should have done it before. I'll just hit F3. I'll come into my polygon mode. Actually, I bet you I can't even do this. No, do you know what? I'll leave it. I should have deleted those little top caps that are now inside there, but it's no big deal at all. Okay, there's my model. How are we for time? 18 minutes. Okay. Um, I am going to very, very quickly unwrap this. I'm not going to put any time at all into unwrapping it. The shapes are simple enough that um, I'm not too worried about the unwrap. It's all one object. So I'm just going to add a UVW unwrap, or unwrap UVW as it's actually called. Scroll down to my open UV editor. My computer is crap in its pants right now for some reason. Uh, in my polygon mode, I will select absolutely everything. It appears I won't select absolutely everything. Let me make sure that my Back face is deactivated. So now you select everything. There we go. And not really what you're meant to do, but I'll just go unfold mapping. Yep, 
Yeah, no, that's terrible, actually. Nope, I won't do that. I'll try flat map instead. That's... Do you know what? It's really, really, really inefficient because look at all this empty space we're getting here. But what we could do is if we had some smaller objects, we could place the smaller objects in these empty spaces. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. That's it unwrapped. Uh, that's okay. What I will do is I go to top level. I am going to yep, select everything there in my hierarchy panel. I'm going to just hit reset transform, reset scale, just good practice. Uh, I already have it zeroed on the origin point. If you haven't done that already, just make sure that your, your barrier is here close to the, uh, the origin point, the little black grid. And what I'll do now is I will save this. I will need to make a new folder. Let me see. There's my last one. So I will just make a new little folder here. 3D Crowd Barrier. Just call you prop underscore crowd barrier. Actually, we even really need to do the underscores with a max file. The max file is never really going anywhere. Uh, it's just a naming convention I would like to use, a little underscores. Uh, but what I need to do now is actually export it out as a FBX. So just select your object again. File. Export. Export selected. And click access. Hopefully that will be up there. It's not. And I'm on the crowd barrier. I will call this... This one we will call prop underscore crowd underscore barrier. And it's always useful to have these little uh, prefixes there of prop, if it's a material, if it's a texture, or whatever it is. Uh, stuff like that is good naming convention so that all those files will come together. So, okay. Now, that's all grand. What I think I need to do is just make sure Turbo Smooth is off. Because, sorry, wait, no, no, never mind. We didn't use Turbo Smooth. I was getting confused there with the smoothing groups. Never worry. Uh, everything's good there. Just leave that as it is. Hit OK and let that export. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to quickly open up Substance Painter. I'm going to pause the video just while that loads and I will see you back in Substance Painter. OK, welcome back, guys. We're in Substance Painter now. Um, all we're going to do is go file and new, navigate to our little file that we created there, uh, prop crowd barrier, uh, just in this little file select button here. We'll set our document resolution up to 2048, probably far too high or higher than it needs to be for a simple prop like this. But again, always remember that if we export out large textures, we can shrink them down. Uh, but you cannot do the opposite. You cannot take a small texture and then expand it up. So here we are. There's a little prop barrier. I think that's looking pretty darn lovely if I do say so myself. So I'm not going to go too complicated on the materials here for this. All I'm going to do is slap a couple of layers on here. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to look for a rust material. Now we don't necessarily need to do this. What I'm going to do is create a kind of a, a battered and old um, old barrier that's had a bit of use and seen a seen a bit of action in its time. So I'm going to type in rust. Is it a smart material or is it a regular material? Still rust. Uh, yeah, that's not too bad actually. Let that load in there. Do I like that? Uh, the trouble is. It's looking a little bit bland there. I mean, you could go away with it. You could leave it like that. Um, that would do. But let me see. In our regular materials, is there a rust? Energy. Ah, here we go. Here's a nice coarse rust material. I'll, I'll drop that on. Oh, 
Now that's what I'm looking for. Here we can see uh, just in the materials panel there we've got a, a pre-made rust coarse material. And now it makes it look really like it's been through the wars. Look at that nice grungy detail there. That's far better. So what I'm going to do is with that um, regular steel rust that I had there, I'm actually going to move it above. So this will be what the majority of the object looks like. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little mask here. Uh, add mask. Add white mask. Now a black mask will hide everything. But a white mask will reveal everything. And on that now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint in areas where I want that rust to shine through. Now you see that my brush is black. And that paint spots are black on my mask. If I do that, you see the rust coming through. And that's what I want to do. I just want to add in some spots where that rust is coming through. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change my brush alpha. I don't want it to be just a big blobby circle. I'm going to just search through here and find something. Um, that's not bad. Brush paper dirty. Just something a bit grungy. And if I grab that, and we'll do the whole control and mouse wheel, just to make that bigger. And just click in a few random spots. And where you're really going to get this is down here on the base, where there may maybe more water and stuff coming at it. And it really rusty down here towards the feet. Just spend a few minutes, oops, painting this in. And that's all I'm really going to do to this is just. Go between those two layers, and then this little bit of rust, just with this one brush, I think will do grand. So, can't really see the bottom here because of the light, but I'm going to paint in a couple of bits there. So, I'm going to pause this video now, I'm going to paint in for a couple of minutes, and then we'll see the final result shortly. So, I will see you right back here with a nice rusty metal barrier. Okay, so here we are. We've just uh, painted on a little bit of rust on that there. Um, or really, technically, what we've done is we've we've masked out some of the clean still to reveal the rust underneath. And I've just done that a wee quick coating over the whole object there. Just uh, not going over absolutely everything. Just little blotches of rust here and there. And I've left some of these uh, rods just quite clean. Um, one thing I would say is try to Put your rust, uh, if you do say the surface here, make sure you go just a little bit up the up the rod as well. So if you've got the horizontal beam part, make sure you've got the horizontal rod. And so that they're kind of a similar color at the join. You don't want those joins being two different colors. It'll really make them stand out as being two different objects. You can kind of see a wee bit of that going on here. So if I just paint on a wee bit more, I'll just help those blend together a bit. Uh, but again, not that anyone in any game is ever going to be on this close to this object. They'll be lucky if they even see it from this distance. So I think that's grand. Uh, one last wee thing we'll do. We'll hit back mesh maps here. Uh, one, or two, four. Uh, just use low poly as high poly. We didn't make a high poly version of this. So there was no need, I don't think. I'll just back default material mesh maps. Now you notice here it says back default material. And our texture set list is called default material. That is because in 3D Studio Max, I forgot to actually add a material to it. Um, not do any harm, really. Um, but it's nice if we put a material on that. Whenever we go to export textures, it'll give it the, the name of that material and stuff. It's, just, it's, it's good practice, but it's easily overlooked. Uh, let me see. How's that looking now? And you can see now we've added those mesh maps. Um, we are actually getting a lot more shininess and stuff on there. And it's really changed the appearance of that. I've got a lot of shininess actually now coming through. Um, those mesh maps are things like your normal, your ambient occlusion, your curvature, things like that. So before I done that, we weren't really getting a lot of this sheen on the shiny metal. I probably should have done this before, to be honest with you. So I've got a really good idea of how that rust would have shown through. But that's not looking too bad. I think I will leave that as is. And we'll call that a day for this tutorial. There's maybe, uh, there's maybe some, hmm, maybe this 
steel material wasn't the best to start with. Let me see what's in here. Steel rust surface. Uh, I might just turn off a couple of these rust layers here. A couple of these metal scratches. No, that's a bit too pristine. So you know what? We'll leave it on. We'll not worry too much about it. Uh, I think that's okay. Sharpen. Maybe turn the opacity of some of these down a little bit. Just to kind of soften the effect. That's a bit better. It's not quite as shiny now. Still a little bit shiny, but not quite as shiny. Right, so how's the rust looking down the bottom? Yeah, that rust is definitely going through a bit better. Yeah, okay, we'll leave it there for that. Uh, that's that little tutorial done. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, hope you liked seeing how the splines could be used there to help make this uh, shape. And I will see you for the next tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much, guys.